Okay, I gotta say, you guys are super smart. Nevertheless, this is going to hurt your brain. <laughs> if you don't have a coffee in hand, grab one. And while you're at it, go ahead and download the sample code uh, and the schematic in the downloads section. Uh, pause the video, I'll wait. We're going to use the A to D converter on our pick. Just using a voltage divider with whatever variable resistor you want. Uh, a pot, a thermistor, a photoresistor, uh, a push button array with a resistor ladder, whatever. Just make a voltage divider across the power supply so you can feed a variable voltage into your PICS A to D converter. Now, if you remember way back in the analog electronics course, in the lesson on voltage dividers, I mentioned one use of a voltage divider. The A to D converter cannot tolerate voltage higher than the supply voltage, whatever that supply voltage is. So always bear that in mind when using the A to D converter. In our case, we're going to divide the supply voltage. So obviously we won't exceed the supply voltage on the A to D input pin. This will give us a varying input voltage on the A to D pin of our choice. Now both the PIC and the Arduino actually only have one built-in A to D converter, but they have multiple analog inputs. The microcontrollers simply connect the converter to the appropriate input that you designate in the settings. We're going to use RA4, but we had previously used RA4 for our RS line controlling our LCD display. Now we still want to use the LCD display, so we'll need to rewire our setup and make some changes to our program. So every instance in our program where we made a signal change on the control lines, we need to switch that to the appropriate line on RC4. But because we are also using port C to send our data, every time we send any data out of port C, we need to make sure the control bits stay set or cleared according to our needs. So in your sample code, I did all the work for you just because I'm such a nice guy. Uh, you'll see what I did here at uh, line 84, for example. After sending the data nibble out on port C, I then just simply issued a bit set command on bit four of latch C before pulsing the E line. Now I did this throughout the program and we'll see it, you know, here and there. Now that we've got this highly useful LCD display, we can make use of it to give us information. What we're going to do is use the onboard analog to digital converter, giving it a varying signal in, and just spit out the actual digital number onto the display. We have a couple of challenges though. If you'll recall, the PIX A to D converter has a 10-bit output delivered into bytes. So we'll just break this into three separate nibbles, displayed as three hexadecimal numbers on our LCD display. Uh, here's the catch though. Remember that the LCD display uses the ASCII character set, right? So let's uh, haul out our fancy high-tech ASCII character set and notice some things. Let's say our ADD converter generated the hex number 3A2. We move our cursor to line two, first position, and we want to send a three to the LCD display. We can't just grab that three from the ADD converter and send it to the display. Why? Because three in ASCII would display an ETX command, which wouldn't even display as a character. That's a special command for electronic typewriters. <laughs> so it wouldn't display a three. To display a three, we have to send 0011, 0011. So we need to convert our number three into an ASCII value. We do this by simply adding a number to it, a number which offsets our value into the numbers on our ASCII chart. Now the number zero is ASCII code 00110000. So by adding this number to whatever number we get, 
it will give us the ASCII code for that number. If we add zero, we get 0011 0000. If we add one, we get 0011 0001. If we add two, we get 0011 0010, etc. So once we have mathematically added our offset value, it is now an ASCII character, and we can then just send that to our display in the usual way of sending the upper nibble first, then the lower nibble second. Our cursor moves over one for us, ready to receive the second digit. But now we go to send our second digit, an A. Uh-oh. <laughs> we can't just add the same offset, because look, there's all these special characters between the numbers and the letters. So we have to add a different offset for hexadecimal letters. A is a decimal value of 10. So let's backtrack 10 characters. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. So this is the offset we need to display hexadecimal letters on our LCD panel. We need to add an offset of 0011, 0111. Confused yet? Take a sip of your coffee and let that sink in for a minute. So we have several steps we have to perform here. We need to get the individual nibbles from the two analog to digital registers. We need to split the three nibbles apart from each other. We need to then convert each nibble into an ASCII value to display its value on the LCD display. To do this, we need to figure out if it's a number or a letter. <laughs> numbers need to be converted to the ASCII numbers. Letters need to be converted separately into ASCII letters. Then we need to send each character to the display in two nibbles. Move the cursor back to the first position on the second row ready to write the new numbers. Now we'll, we'll throw a short pause in there in between each readout. Also, you remember that the A to D converter takes time. We need to set up the A to D converter, tell it to start its conversion, and then keep checking up on it to see if it's finished yet or not. Once it's done, We'll grab the two bytes and store their values in two general purpose registers and set the ATD converter on its way again to start doing the next conversion while you know we play with numbers and displaying them. Okay, take a sip of your coffee as you're going to need it and let's take a look at the code. Much of the code is actually exactly what we used before. I literally copied and pasted it. The same setup with the one, uh, with the one megahertz clock, so we're running slow enough for the LCD display. We set up the tri-state A register for all inputs except for bit 5, which we're still using for the E line on the LCD display. We then proceed to set up the analog to digital converter. Now this is set up with a few different registers. Ansel A is for the analog select register for port A. Now there's another register, Ansel C for port C. If you take a look at the pinouts on your data sheet on pin eight or page eight, you'll notice that you can connect multiple uh, input output pins to the analog converter. Uh, pin three, 10, 9, 8, and 7. Now remember, you only have one analog to digital converter on board, so you need to connect the pin you want to use to the A to D converter. Now you can change this on the fly, of course, right in the middle of your program, but we don't need to do that. We're only going to read one analog input off of pin 3, which is RA4. So if you head on over to page 133 in your data sheet, you'll find the Ansel A register. There is only one possible analog input on port A, and that's bit 4. So if you look here, you can see that if it's set to a 1, 
you'll see that if it is set to bit one, you can no longer use that pin as an output, and it is now set as an analog input. So take a look in your code at lines 24 and 25, you'll see that's exactly what we do. We set bit four on the Ansel A register. The next registers we need to set up are ADCON 0 and 1, ADCON for analog to digital control. And there are two control registers needed to set up the ADD converter. Let's head back to our data sheet, starting at page 160. And let's take a look at those registers. Now the first one, ADCON 0, controls which analog input gets connected to the ADD converter. Again, you can change this as many times as you want throughout your program, but we're just setting it up once and leaving it that way. So here you can see that bits uh, 6 through 2 set which channel gets connected. However, don't get fooled. Look at the pinout listing on page 8 again for a second. We're using RA4, which is on pin 3, and uses channel AN3. It's not AN4, though you might think that, because they you know, usually line up the channel numbers with the port numbers and, and stuff. You know. But no, be on guard for that. So we need to set up the channel for AN3. Head back to page 160. So here, to set it to AN3, bits 6 to 2 get set to 00011. Now the first bit, bit 7, is unimplemented. So we'll throw a 0 in there just for entertainment. So setting up this byte so far, we have 0, 00011. The next bit is the go done bit. Now this is the bit I told you about in the last couple of lessons where we set this bit high, the ADD converter starts its conversion process, which takes time. When it completes its conversion and it has found the magical mystery number, it clears that bit so it goes low. Now we can check it and when we see that the bit has gone low, we know that we can retrieve the analog number from our output buffer. The last bit is the AD on or analog on bit. This is what activates the analog to digital converter circuitry. Leaving it off saves on power, but obviously we need to turn this on in order to perform our A to D conversions. You'll notice elsewhere in the data sheet that they say to turn on the add on bit first, but not to set the go bit high in the same command. Now it's not the end of the world if you do, but it messes up that conversion. So we're going to turn add on by setting it high, but leave the go bit low. So we'll be setting the add con zero byte, byte to zero, 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 one, one, zero, one. That makes sense? Take a swig of your coffee. I know this is hard in the head. Scroll down the page and you'll see the ADCON 1 register. Let's take a look to see what the various bits do here. Now, bit 7 is the ADFM bit for analog to digital format. If you scroll up to page 157, you'll see that the two bytes into which the A to D converter spits out its results, uh, address H and address L short for analog to digital result high and analog to digital result low. Now, as you can see, you can format the output of one of two ways. The most significant bit in bit seven of the high bit with only the upper two bits of the lower byte being used or the least significant bit in bit zero of the low byte. In either case, the result only uses 10 bits so the other remaining bits won't be used. Now we want this format, so you'll see that the ADFM bit needs to be set to a 1 for this format. 
So back to page 161. There's that ADFM bit, which we now know we want to set high. They call this right justified. Bit six to four are for the clock selection. Now you'll remember the analog conversion was accomplished using clock cycles. You can slow this down even more by putting a clock divider in front of the clock pulses going into the ADD converter. Now there may be times you want to do this. But right now we don't care about any of that. We want to go full bore, convert as fast as we can. So rather than dividing the clock by two or eight or 32, we're just going to go the full RC clock that's generated in the pick. So we can set these bits to either 011 or 111. Either one sets the clock conversion to no conversion and it just feeds the clock straight into the converter. We'll use 111. Bits three to two are unimplemented. So it doesn't matter what we put in them, we'll throw in a 00, zero in there. Lastly, bits one through zero configure the reference voltage. Now you can provide a reference voltage if you want and connect it to the designated pins on the pick. Or there are pre-calibrated voltage references built into the pick as well that you can use. Now we don't care about any of that. We're just going to divide our supply voltage. So we'll connect the reference supply some reference voltage to the positive supply known otherwise known as VDD. So to do that bits zero and or bits one and zero are both set to zeros. So in review we'll set this byte to one 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 zero 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 zero. Does that make sense? Take a swig of your coffee, then let's head on over to our top secret code.